Hello everyone, Scott Laird here from Royal Oaks Country Club. I want to talk to you today about how you can hit your uh, wedges a little bit better. And I think we can define wedge play in two different categories. We have our finesse wedges, which are shots around the green where we're trying to slow the ball down, or more distance wedges where we're hitting a, a wedge from outside of 30 yards. So today specifically, we're gonna talk about distance wedges and how you can uh, hit those more consistently. So we're indoors today. Uh, we've got TrackMan here just to uh, illustrate a few important points. So the best players in the world when they hit distance wedge shots, they're actually flighting the ball, hitting the ball lower rather than higher. Many of the players that, uh, that I play golf with, when they hit a wedge shot, uh, the ball goes way too high. They think that that's the stopping power that you need in order to hit a wedge correctly. So think about this, if uh, we were gonna toss um, golf balls onto a green and we are having a competition where we're trying to see who can get the ball to roll to the hole the closest, would you throw the ball way up in the air or would you naturally throw the ball a little bit lower to the ground in order to get that ball closer to the hole? I think most of you would probably say, well, it'd make more sense if I roll the ball um, lower to the ground to get the ball closer. So kind of the same concept here is if we can get the ball to uh, launch a little bit lower with our wedges so that it flights a little bit lower, we're gonna have more control. Now, um, as far as what that does to uh, spin, it's actually been proven using a launch monitor that if you can launch the ball in a 28 to 30 degree window, which means the ball comes off the club face at 28 to 30 degrees, there'll be more spin produced, backspin produced on a golf ball than if you launch it lower than 28 degrees or higher than 28 degrees or 30 degrees, okay? Now think about this, I have a 54 degree wedge in my hand. If I'm going to launch a ball at 28 to 30 degrees, there's gotta be something dynamically that's happening with my golf club in order to launch that ball lower. So here's kind of the heart of the lesson here. How would we do this? How would we practice trying to launch the ball a little bit lower so we have more control and a higher spin rate? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play the ball back in our stance a little bit towards our trail foot. That is gonna give me the ability to take some loft off of my 54 degree wedge. And then number two, we're gonna try to feel like we have a little bit of a draw bias to both our path and our club face. So let me uh, hit a shot here to kind of demonstrate. So we're gonna put the ball back in our stance a little bit towards our trail foot. We might want to aim our feet a little bit to the left of the target. And then we're going to try to feel this draw bias so that we're coming in on a pretty shallow angle and I'm letting the club face rotate or twist. Now, why would I want that? Number one, I want less loft on the club at impact. But number two, if I can get the club face to rotate or twist this way in a closing position, the ball actually is um, going to stay on the club face for a little bit longer, producing more backspin, versus most of us come across the ball from an out to in swing with an open face, and the ball is going to ride up the face and you're not gonna utilize the backspin that you need, okay? So again, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demonstrate. The ball back, I'm gonna hit a little bit of a draw shot. Okay, so as you can see, my dynamic loft on my club was uh, almost 37 degrees for a 54 degree wedge. And my launch angle was 26.7. So it was close to that 28 to 30 degree window. And I had a spin rate of 5,800. Okay, plenty of stopping power. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to see one of the golf professionals here at Royal Oaks. Thank you.